We've known for nearly 20 years that our taste for fish was emptying the seas, but it never killed our appetite. Now up to 90% of the big catch, like salmon and cod, may have already disappeared from the oceans, thanks to pollution and overfishing. Skipper Ralph St. Croix says large-scale commercial trawlers are to blame for decimating the big fish and also their smaller prey. They're devastating out here, the small fish, all the small herring, you know. They're taking the feed, you know. And they're getting bycatch, so they're getting haddock too, you know. They're killing all the haddock, you know. The alarm over fish stocks first sounded in 1995, and since then, quotas limiting fish hauls have been introduced. Some species like cod have started to make a slow comeback. But this environmentalist says a true recovery will require much more regulation of the entire industry. Not just the domestic fisheries, the international fisheries, the illegal fisheries, uh, the countries that are giving sanctuary to boats that go out and illegally harvest fish. Those activities are hurting all of us. The fish supply may be shrinking, but the global appetite for seafood is only growing. To feed it, more suppliers are turning to aquaculture, which already produces nearly half the fish eaten in the U.S. Our demand for seafood is much greater than what the wild ocean can satisfy. And so the only way to produce more is through farming, just like we do with land animals. But the farms raise controversy, especially their use of antibiotics. Fish farmers are also struggling to come up with enough feed for their stock, since the main ingredient, smaller wild fish, is increasingly hard to come by. If we want to grow more carnivorous fish like this in the future, we have to find another source for the ingredients for the feed. New food for fish and new fish for humans. The next generation's catch may not be as prized as today's, but it may be the only thing left on the menu.